I hope to share with you a recent work on capital allocation under the fundamental review of trading book. The fundamental review of trading book is a new global risk management framework proposed by the Basel Committee. And this is a regulation to determine the minimum capital requirement for market risk uh, imposed on banks. The goal of this new regulation framework is to ensure that banks have sufficient capital to weather the stressful events and make the global financial system more stable. This is the cover page of the final version of uh, the regulation published in January of 2016. The current regulation framework is based on the Basel II and its recent extension, so-called 2.5. In both of these two regulation frameworks, for different risk position, regardless of its liquidity, we always take the 10-day ahead profit and loss for each of the risk position and aggregate them together. As a result, liquidity of different risk position is not taken into account under the current regulation framework. After the loss uh, is aggregated to the portfolio, a risk measure, so-called the value at risk, is used to evaluate the riskiness of the portfolio. And for this risk measure, it do not give information about the tail risk go beyond certain quantile. And moreover, it has very little uh, aggregation property. The FRTB tried to improve these two aspects by incorporating the market liquidity into the evaluation of risk and moreover, replace the value at risk by the expected shortfall, which has a better aggregation property. FRTB will have a huge impact on the global banking system. Um, a quote from the Bloomberg News says that one certain thing from the process is that the capital requirement will rise. This is going to be life-threatening for some trading desk as heads of division assess whether it is economical to be in certain business. One way to evaluate the capital efficiency of each of the desk or each of the risk position is calculate its associate return on risk adjusted capital. For each of the risk position, this is essentially the ratio between the return of this position and the capital allocated to this risk position. The higher this ratio is, the more efficient this position use capital. In order to calculate the capital allocated, we need to have a mechanism which allocate the banking capital for the entire firm to the capital uh, needed for each of the business unit, for each of the trading desk, or to each of the uh, risk position. And moreover, under the FRTB, in order to calculate the capital, there are two regimes. Either it is the standardized approach, the SA, or the internal market approach, IMA. Both of these two regimes will increase the capital requirement compared to the current uh, framework. And uh, the, uh, the, improve, the increase is significant. The last quantile impact study shows that the capital charge increased by 128% under the standardized approach and 54% under the internal market approach. So it's quite large increase. This also shows that if banks have sufficient resource, they will try to implement the internal market approach, which increased the capital requirement less. However, to calculate the risk uh, capital requirement under the IMA uh, compared to the current regulation framework, it is also more computational demanding. Therefore, for the capital allocation methods that we are going to design, we need to make sure that they are computationally efficient. Under the FRTB, profit and loss for each of the risk position is first allocated to different risk factor class and different liquidity horizon. Each of the risk factor is uh, classified into one of the five categories 
commodity, credit risk, equity, fixed income, and interest rate. And for the risk factor in each of the class, it is assigned with a risk liquidity horizon from 10 days to 120 days. Therefore, you have five different risk factor class, and in each of them, you have five liquidity horizon. So in total, you have 25 different risk factor and liquidity horizon bucket. The first step is to adjust according to the liquidity horizon. For the unadjusted profit and loss allocated to each of the buckets, we first need to uh, aggregate them according to the following rule. The shortest uh, liquidity horizon bucket will have contribution from the five bucket and the net multiplied with the scaling factor. The longest uh, liquidity horizon bucket will only have a contribution from one liquidity horizon bucket, but the scaling factor is much larger. And after you have done the liquidity horizon adjustment, we have the risk liquidity horizon adjusted uh, profit and loss. And we represent this by a 5 by 5 matrix, which we call the risk profile. And each of the elements is a liquidity horizon adjusted profit and loss allocated to uh, that specific bucket. Due to this liquidity horizon adjustment, in both of our allocation methods, we follow this two step. First, you start with the bank uh, global capital requirement and first allocate it to each of the risk position and each of the liquidity horizon, each of the risk factor class. And in the second step, we reverse the step of the liquidity horizon adjustment. As a result, the shortest liquidity horizon bucket will only have one contribution and the longest uh, liquidity horizon bucket will have contribution from five buckets of different liquidity horizon. So the longer liquidity horizon bucket will have more contribution in its capital allocation. We introduce two capital uh, allocation methods uh, specifically designed for the FRTB. The first is the Euler allocation applies to the FRTB. The second is the type of the constraint Omen shuffling allocation. Both of these two allocation methods has the following three property. First, it is both of them are computationally efficient. We show that both of them are actually scale version of the current Euler allocation method and the scaling factor depending on the risk of factor and also depending on the liquidity horizon. Therefore, it is very easy to implement. Second, um, compared to the current regulation framework, both of these allocations produce less negative allocation for the hedging position. This is due to the fact that the FRTB largely constrain the hedging among different uh, risk factor and different liquidity horizon bucket. Third, the current, uh, the two allocation method that we introduce also produce more stable allocation compared to the current framework. This is because there are more averaging going on under uh, this two proposed allocation method. We will illustrate these three points using the following three simulation analysis. In the first analysis, we try to look at what is the impact of the liquidity horizon adjustment on the allocation. These are the four scenarios, and in different scenarios, there are different correlation structure among different buckets. Uh, the horizontal axis for all of these four graphs are liquidity horizon. On your right-hand side, this has longer liquidity horizon. On your left-hand side, it has shorter liquidity horizon. Uh, the black bar is the allocation uh, of the Euler under the current regular expected shortfall, which do not distinguish uh, the liquidity horizon and uh, the risk factor class. In the first scenario, where we assume that all the bucket has independent profit and loss, you see that uh, the current allocation method will give negative uh, allocation. The blue and the red one 
are the results of the allocation method that we propose. In all four scenarios, they produce positive allocation to each of the bucket. Moreover, you can observe that in this four scenario, the longer the liquidity horizon is, the larger the allocation it is. This comes from the two factor. First, longer liquidity horizon will have larger scaling factor. Second, under our method in the step two, the longer liquidity horizon bucket will have more contribution from other buckets. In the second simulation analysis, we try to see what is the impact of the allocation uh, under the hedging position. Under the current uh, framework, if you have hedging position, the allocation to one of them could be negative. This is problematic if you want to calculate the return on risk-adjusted uh, ratio. Uh, we consider three uh, hedging situation. Uh, the first one is a strong hedging between different liquidity horizon class. Uh, the first one is about the strong hedging among different risk factor class. And the last one is about the hedging among different risk position, but within the same bucket. The first two pictures shows that under the FRTB, even though you may have hedging among different risk factor class and liquidity horizon, under our uh, allocation method, it always produces positive allocation among hedging position. Uh, in the current framework, the black bar shows that it could produce negative allocation. If you have strong uh, uh, hedging within the same bucket, since the FRTB do not constrain the hedging in such a situation, we could also produce negative allocation. But the magnitude of negative allocation is much less compared to the current framework. This is because the allo negative allocation in certain buckets can be offset or even cancelled by positive allocation in other buckets. We also show that the distribution of uh, allocation is much tighter in the FRTB uh, compared to the current regulation framework. The lower left panel is the Euler allocation under the current uh, uh, expected shortfall. As you can see that the allocation is quite widespread among different uh, buckets. However, if you look at the FRTB allocation, uh, both of them are much tighter. And compare these two allocation methods, uh, the constraint Omen shuffling produce an even tighter allocation uh, compared to the Euler allocation method. This is because the constraint Omen shuffling uh, is subject to more averaging compared to the Euler allocation. But the constraint Omen shuffling is also more computational expensive. Lastly, we look at uh, the impact of the choice of risk factor in the reduced risk factor class on the allocation and the capital uh, charge. We consider a scenario that we have two risk factor. Uh, both of them change significantly during, uh, dur during the stress event. And uh, in these two scenarios, if we include both of these risk factors or exclude both of them, they satisfy the current regulation requirement. But if you, in if you include both of them, this increases the capital charge under the FRTB significantly. And moreover, um, it increases the capital required for these two stress uh, risk factors. So this table shows that the current regulation framework uh, is quite sensitive to the choice of the risk factor in the reduced set of risk factors. So in conclusion, we introduced two allocation methods specifically designed for FRTB. Both of them are computationally efficient and they can be adapted to the current system quite easily. And the simulation shows that uh, the longer liquidity horizon bucket uh, usually lead to larger allocation. 
and due to the constraint of the hedging among different buckets, the negative allocation is much less compared to the current framework. Both of the allocation methods produce more stable allocation, uh, and the current regulation framework is also quite sensitive to the choice of the risk of factors. Okay, thanks for watching. If you are interested, please get in touch. Thank you.